All right, so um, as we, if for anyone who recalls and for anyone who's new, uh, we start every class. If you, if you feel more comfortable in a seated position, any of the exercise we're gonna do can be done in a modified version, but we're gonna do it standing up for those that can. Awesome. So we're gonna go feet shoulder width, everything nice and relaxed. We're gonna make a nice big hoop with our arms. Excellent, and we're gonna gently turn the waist, three to the right, three to the left, and repeat. So here we go. One, two, three, 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 one, two, and three. Awesome. Left hand on the waist, we're gonna reach over one, two, three, 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 one, two, and three. Excellent. We're going to raise the arms gently. We're going to bend at the waist, stretching towards the floor, trying to keep your knees straight. Just go as far as your body will allow. One, two, three. We turn to the right. Two, three. We turn to the left. Two, three. Middle one time. We stand up. Inhale. And exhale. Very good. Again. One, two, three. To your right. Two, three. To your left. Two, three. Middle once, we stand up, we inhale, and exhale. Awesome, again. One, two, three. To your right, two, three. To your left, two, three. Middle one time, we stand up, inhale, and exhale. Great, hands on the waist. We're gonna make a circle with the waist, one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, and two. We're going to change directions. When we're doing this, just as a quick note, um, a lot of people aren't aware how tight our ankles can get. Um, and you think, tight ankles? But actually, the mobility of that thing to articulate fully is sometimes hampered. And so when we're doing this, we do want to try to keep our feet flat, which will help to kind of stretch out the ligament and let it move a little more freely. So we go the opposite direction. One, two, three, good, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, and two. Very good. We're going to cross our arms. Place our hands on the knees, which we bend. We're kind of bracing the knees here. And again, we want to try to keep the feet flat. We're going to make a gentle circle with the knees. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, and two. Let's switch hands, switch directions. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, and two. Hands on the waist. This time we're going to turn gently side to side. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, and two. Back and forth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, and two. Tilting. One, two, Three, four, five, six, 
7, 8, 9, 10, 1, and 2. And rotation, looking all the way around, nice gentle circle, 2, and 3. And we switch, 1, 2, and 3. Awesome job, everybody. We're going to open up the feet. And if you're standing next to your chair, just walk, watch out because you don't want to whack your hand on the chair. But we're going to gently turn the waist and try to look behind you. A lot of times we think we're turning the waist, but we're really swinging the arm. If you turn your head, generally the body's going to follow. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, and four. Excellent job. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to point our left toe to the corner and we're going to touch the arch of our right foot to the heel and step straight out. Since we have the bricks, we can kind of use those bricks as a guide. So we want to have the foot that steps out, our right foot, to be on the same line as the heel of the supporting leg. Yep. And we call this an empty stance. All of the weight is on the supporting leg, which is our left. Very good. And we'll put the hands on the waist. We're going to gently shift forward, bending the right knee, straightening the left. And we sit back, we go forward, and back. Good. So just a, a quick tip about doing this. A lot of times when we go forward, we don't want to straighten the rear leg. We think we're going to push ourselves too far forward. And if my feet are too close together, it's true, I kind of hit that tipping point. If you step out a little bit farther, then what happens is, as you go forward, your front knee bends, your back leg straightens, the rear foot stays flat. And the thing that's really important to balance is that we keep our shoulders on top of the hips. So you can notice that if I go forward and I'm leaning into this, my balance kind of carries me too far. But if I can keep my shoulders directly on top of my hips, it doesn't get that far past the tipping point. So we're going to shift forward and back forward and back. Now we're going to pivot on our right heel, shift to the right and pivot on the left. We're facing 180 from where we were. And again, we go forward, back, forward, back, pivot, shift to the left, pivot on the right. We go forward, back, forward, back. Very good. Pivot, shift, pivot, forward, back, forward, and back. Awesome. <laughs> Deep breathing, palms up, elbows down, elbows out. We're going to inhale as we go up. We come down slowly with the breath. Good. Palms up, elbows down, elbows out. We inhale, come down slowly with the breath. And one more time, palms up, Elbows down, elbows out. We inhale, come down slowly with the breath. So I'm sure everyone has heard that Tai Chi is good for balance. There's a lot of doctors prescribing Tai Chi to their patients, but not necessarily understanding all of the nuances of how Tai Chi helps improve balance. So one of the ways that it does that is it challenges our balance, right? And so those of you that have been in class with me before have probably heard me say this 8 million times, so I apologize. But for those that are new, uh, we will never improve our balance sitting on the couch. I am not seeing anything against sitting on the couch. It's a wonderful activity, but it's not going to improve my balance, right? And so in those moments where I'm trying to go up on my toes and I feel like, whoa, or I'm shifting forward and I feel kind of off balance, it actually improves my balance because this is a moment where my brain is keenly focused on balance. It prioritizes. It says, whoa, this is important. Right? The rest of the time, if I'm not challenging my balance and putting myself in position where my balance is somewhat at risk without being dangerous, um, it doesn't improve because your brain says, well, that's not important. It, we're not being fed that stimulus. So this is just something to keep in mind. Whenever we're doing something like this or if we're on one foot 
or whatever we're doing. If you feel off balance, it's actually a positive thing, as long as you don't actually fall over and injure. Okay, so back to it. We're going to go feet shoulder width, hands on the waist. We're going to do shoulder rolls going back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, and two. And we go forward. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, and two. Now we're going to do arm swings. We're going to pick our palms up, turn the palms over, let it just kind of free fall. While we're doing this, we want to inhale through the nose on the up and exhale on the down. So you want to do this at your own timing because you don't want to get lightheaded trying to follow someone else. But on the up, we inhale, and on the down, we exhale. All the breathing in Tai Chi we do is actually done through the nose. Excellent job. Again, we do deep breathing. Palms up, elbows down, elbows out. We go up, inhale, and slowly exhale. Very good. Again, inhale, and slowly exhale. And one more time, palms up, elbows down, elbows out. We inhale, and exhale. Beautiful. Now we're going to make a circle with the wrists. We're always going to reference our body for the size and shape of things. And so we're going to reference our shoulders. I want to bring my elbows out and then my elbows down. My hands don't go a lot higher than my shoulders. If I don't move my elbows at all, I just hinge from the elbow. You notice the hands cross. So if I don't want my hands to cross, I pull my elbows out. I drop my elbows. My hands stay the height of my shoulder, and then they come down. So we come up the middle and down. Very good. What a beautiful day it turned into. Very good. Now let's change directions. So we come this way, palms face up as they come down the middle. Good. Excellent. Well done. So now we're going to go both palms face down. I know it's a little bit of an odd thing, but we're going to do a visualization. I want you to envision your hands holding on to a, one of those wacky pool noodles. You ever see those things, colored foam? And what that's going to do is it doesn't require any strength because it's very light, but it's going to keep our hands the same distance apart as they travel in the same direction. We're going to make a big circle. We turn to the right, lift. Turn to the left, come down. Good. Turn to the right, lift. Left, down. Awesome. To the right. On this one, when we lift, we're going to go vertical and then change directions to the left, lift, right, down, very good, left, lift, right, down, left, lift, vertical, and we change directions, right, lift, left, down, right, lift, left, down, right, lift, vertical, good, change directions, left, lift, right, down, left, lift, right, down, left, lift, vertical, very good. All right, so now again, again we're going to put our palms facing down. We're going to gently bend the knees, and we're going to slowly and gently shift our weight to the left side. Now again, when we shift the weight, now we shift to the right. When we do this, we want to do two things. Well, three things. We want to stay relaxed, as relaxed as is possible. Two, we want to keep the hips on underneath the shoulders. If I tip to the side and my shoulders get past my hip, that's the tipping point, right? If I shift to the side, but my shoulders stay on top of my hips, then my balance is intact. The other thing we need to do is bend the knees, right? If you can imagine being a skier, if you didn't bend your knees, you're going to be in the woods pretty quickly. Uh, if you bend your knees, you're kind of shock absorbing and able to keep your torso more vertical, which again helps with balance. So when we shift to the left, 
We're going to bend the knees, kind of settling in position. We shift to the right. Good. We shift to the left. Now, let's try this again. We're going to shift to the left, and we're going to now stand up on our left leg, bringing the right foot in, extend it out, bring it in, out. Now we're going to shift to the right, lift, bring it in, bring it out. Excellent. Bring it in, bring it out. Shift, lift, bring it in, out, in, out, shift. Lift, bring it in, out, and in. Excellent. The next exercise we're going to do mimics a walking step. But because we're going to be paying attention to the details, it's actually technically more difficult than walking uh, because you never think about how to walk. You just go. It's automated already. right? So what we want to do is put all of our weight on our right leg, and we're going to reach back and touch with our left. We don't want to put weight on it. We just want to lightly touch. We're going to bring it forward and lightly touch. Good. Back, forward, back, forward, and back. Awesome. So we've got the bottom half of the body dialed in. We're now going to bring our left hand to the front and the right hand back. As we bring the foot forward, we're going to switch hands. Excellent. And back. Forward, back. Perfect. Forward, back. Forward, back, forward, back, forward, and back. Very good. Let's switch to the other side. Putting all of the weight on the left, we bring the right foot back, bring the right hand forward, and we're going to go forward, back. Perfect. Forward, back, forward, back. Good. Forward, back, forward, back. Forward, back, forward, and back. Very good. So just one thing about uh, where we focus our gaze while we're doing this. Um, I had a snowboard instructor years ago who told me, if you want to go left, if you want to go left, look left. If you want to go right, look right. If you want to fall down, look down. Right? <laughs> and, uh, and so there was a lot of wisdom in what he said because we can certainly focus our eyes on a spot, say, six, eight feet on the ground in front of us. But if we drop our chin to look down, we've actually changed our balance point. You've brought the weight of your head forward. And while you may not lose your balance doing that, the muscles of the lower back get kind of tight to compensate so that you don't just go forward. So if we can keep our head upright, even if you want to spot on the floor with your eyes, but you do that with your eyes versus doing that with the chin, that can help with balance. Very good. All right. So let's try the next one. We're going to put all of our weight on our right leg, and we're going to lightly touch out to the side. We come in, out, in, out, in, and out. Good. So with our Left foot out, we're going to bring both hands to the right. As we come across, as we bring the foot in, we're going to come across with the hands. In, out. Good. In, out. 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 In, out and out. Awesome. Let's try the other side. So we put all the weight on the left, put the right foot out, both hands to the left, come across as we come in, out, in, out. Excellent job. In, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, in, out, and finally in and out. Well done. OK, so again, deep breathing. We inhale and exhale. Good. Inhale and exhale. And one more time, we inhale and exhale. Oh, runaway mask. OK. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is you're going to point your right foot towards the front of the class. And again, we're going to reference the the heel. So we're going to put our right, our left, or the arch of our left foot against the heel of our right, and we're going to step straight out. Yep. 
So if you can, maybe try, try the step going to the side just because that way when you reference it, will be I'm doing mirror image to you, it will be easier to see. So what we're going to do is shift our weight. Sorry, so uh, right now what I'm doing is mirror image. Right? So mirror image is either your best friend or the devil. It just depends on how you're wired. It has nothing to do with aptitude or intelligence. Uh, it's like being right-handed or left-handed. So with our left foot, we step out to the side. Very good. Now what we want to do is shift our weight to the left and release the hip. If we relax the hip, our body naturally turns to that side. We sit back. If we relax the hip, we turn to the front. We shift, relax, turn. Sit back, relax, turn. Shift, relax, turn. Sit back, relax, turn. Beautiful. So one of the things that we're doing is kind of proving a point, which is that your body wants to align itself to the direction of your foot that has weight on it, right? So an extreme version of that would be if I crank this foot around and take all of my weight off of the other leg, I end up coming around to this side, right? I wasn't trying to turn that way. It's just if I relax, your body's most comfortable in that aligned position. And we can use that to our advantage. So when we shift out, if we release, we end up turning to this side. We sit back. When we release, we end up turning to this side. So then you don't have to think about where to turn. You just shift and relax your body, and it happens. So of course, Tai Chi being what it is, we're going to add the arms. We're going to put our right hand on the left shoulder and our left hand on the right hip. Very good. Now we're going to shift, lift our left hand up, bring the right hand diagonally down. Good. Lift the left elbow, turn, and bring the left hand down. I know this is pretty complex, but it'll get easier, I promise. So right hand to the shoulder, sit back, left hand to the hip. Good. Shift to the left, lift the left. Draw down with the right diagonally. Turn, draw down with the left. Right hand to the shoulder. Sit back, left hand to the hip. Very good. Shift to the left, lift the left. Draw down with the right. Lift the elbow, turn, draw down with the left. Right hand to the shoulder. Sit back, left hand to the hip. Shift to the left, lift the left. Draw down with the right. Turn, draw down with the left. Beautifully done, everyone. So this is the definition of kind of complex and multidimensional movement that those who have been doing uh, Tai Chi class have come to expect and can be kind of a challenge in the beginning. But what I hope you can see is that we have a, a methodology here where we take something pretty complex and we break it down into easier to assemble components. Because if I were to have started like this and said, OK, everybody, just follow along. Right? We have a bunch of us waving our hands around and none of us really understanding. And so if we take it and kind of break it down into, OK, we're going to do the legs are going to do this, and then the arms are going to track in this direction, it's easier to put it all together. So let's try that on the other side. We put our left foot facing directly forward, touch the arch of our right foot, and step straight out with the right. Good. We shift to the right, relax, turn to the right, sit back on the left, release, turn back to the front. Shift to the left, relax, turn. Sit back, turn, good. Shift to the left, turn, sit back, turn. One more time, shift to the left, turn, sit back, and turn. Excellent. So now we're going to go left hand to the shoulder, right hand to the hip, shift to the right, lift the right, draw down with the left, lift the right, and draw down with the right. So left hand to the shoulder, sit back, right hand to the hip. Now when we shift to the right, when we lift, we want to kind of hinge from the elbow. If you had a compact mirror in your palm, you should be able to see your reflection in your palm without having to move your hand up or down too much. That's it. Perfect. And now we come down diagonally with the left. Yep. And we come down with the right. So we go left hand to the shoulder, sit back, right hand to the hip, shift to the right, lift the right. Good. Draw down with the left. Turn, draw down with the right. Left hand to the shoulder, sit back, right hand to the hip, shift to the right, lift the right, draw down with the left. Turn, draw down with the right. One more time. Left hand to the shoulder. Sit back, right hand to the hip. Shift to the right, lift the right. Draw down with the left. Turn, draw down with the right. So that's pretty well done all around. All right, this one, you can do this one of two ways. You can do this the, the easier way is with both feet shoulder width. Uh, for those that are looking for a challenge for balance, we're going to lightly touch with the left toe. Either, again, either way works. 
We're going to cross our arms at the wrist with the left hand on the outside. And we would call this a vertical elbow position, right? Because the hands are largely straight up and down. And what we're going to do is go to a horizontal elbow position. So we lift the elbows, very good. We're going to extend the left hand directly out to the front. And we're going to turn our waist 45 degrees to the corner. Perfect. We're going to drop our elbows to vertical, come back to the front, and cross. Lift to horizontal, extend the left to the front as we turn to the corner. Good. Drop the elbows, turn back to the front. Excellent. Lift the elbows, extend to the front, turn to the corner. Drop the elbows, turn back to the front. Lift the elbows, extend the left hand to the front, turn to the corner. Drop the elbows, turn back to the front. That's really well done. Let's try the other side. So we're going to lightly touch with our right, crossing with the right hand on the outside. We're going to lift the elbows, extend the right hand to the front, and turn to the corner. Drop the elbows, turn to the front, cross right hand in front. Lift the elbows, extend the right hand to the front, turn to the corner. Drop the elbows, turn to the front. Lift the elbows, extend the right hand to the front, turn to the corner. Drop the elbows, turn to the front. And one more time, lift the elbows, extend the right hand to the front, turn to the corner. Drop the elbows, and turn to the front. Beautiful. That's really well done. So in the order of the exercises, we like to take these two really complex exercises and follow them with something a little simpler. So what we're going to do here is feet shoulder width. This is called preparation. This also happens to be the first move in the Tai Chi form. And what we're going to do is relax, lift the arms until the arms are the height of the shoulders, relax the shoulders and elbow, draw the elbows back till the hands come back to the chest, and then press down beside the body and settle in the legs. We're going to repeat. So we lift, draw down, press, and settle. Lift, draw down, press and settle. Very good. Lift, draw down, press and settle. 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 And one more time, we lift, draw down, press and settle. Beautifully done. This next exercise, we're going to hold a low hoop. So our elbows are bent slightly. We have this kind of round shape in the arms, palms face up. And we want to be present, kind of feel what's happening in the body. And we want to be relaxed and breathe deeply. Very good. Let's raise that hoop shoulder height. You might notice a little more tension in the shoulders when you come that far away from the body. But you want to try to breathe through that to get the shoulders to relax as well. Excellent. We're going to bring the elbows down, holding a small ball between the palms. Nicely done. And we breathe. We're going to bring the elbows out, turn the palms over. We're going to straighten the legs, the arms, and the spine. Everything kind of standing tall but relaxed. Straighten the wrist, fingers towards the ground. Good. And back to that deep breathing exercise. Palms up, elbows down, elbows out. We inhale and exhale. Again, palms up. Elbows down, elbows out, we inhale and exhale. One more time, palms up, elbows down, elbows out, we inhale and exhale. Awesome. So we're going to step out to that same stance that we're in for this really complicated silk reeling exercise. Uh, as I've told you before, for those that are in class, silk reeling has five different positions. One, two, three, four, five. This is way easier because it's only one, two, three, four. So we're going to step out. And we're going to do that same shift to the side, turn, sit back, and turn, shift to the side, turn, sit back, and turn. We're also going to go with the right hand to the left shoulder and the left hand to the right hip. And now what we're going to do is we're going to shift. The, right hand, the left hand comes up and the right hand comes down. So we end up in this same position where the right hand is kind of 
resting on this invisible counter, and your palm, if you had a compact mirror, you can see your face's reflection right there. Now we're going to sit back, bring the right hand to the shoulder, left hand to the hip, and shift forward. Left hand comes up, right hand comes down. Good. Sit back, reset, hip and shoulder. Shift forward. Good. Sit back, reset, hip and shoulder. Shift forward. Sit back, reset, hip and shoulder, and shift forward. Excellent. Let's try the other side. So we're going to step out with the right foot. Left hand to the shoulder, right hand to the hip. We shift. Right hand comes up, left hand comes down. Sit back, reset. So we want the left hand at the shoulder and the right hand at the hip. Shift. Right hand comes up, left hand comes down. Sit back, reset. Good. Shift. Right hand comes up, left hand comes down. Sit back, reset. Shift. Right hand comes up, left hand comes down. Sit back, reset. Beautifully done. So we go back to that shoulder width position. Both palms down. By the way, is everybody doing all right? OK, good. Just checking. <laughs> OK, so what we're going to do is we did this big circle with both hands earlier, what we're going to do is just the right arm. So we're going to make a circle. Very good. Awesome. Now we're going to put that down. We'll pick up the left and do the same thing. Very good. Now we're going to do the right followed by the left, followed by the right, followed by the left, followed by the right, followed by the left. Awesome. So of course, being Tai Chi, we have to add something to it. And what we're going to do is turn the waist. So we're going to pick up the right hand and turn to the right, put down the right, pick up the left, and turn to the left. Put it down, pick up the right hand, turn to the right, put it down, pick up the left, turn to the left. Very good. Put it down, pick up the right, turn to the right. Put it down, pick up the left, turn to the left. Very good. So that's called waving hands like clouds. You'll notice as we go that the names of all of the postures and movements that we do in Tai Chi, they're kind of flowery in language, right? Um, this is really just the way that people spoke back in the day in ancient China. Uh, it's like Shakespearean English versus uh, American. Um, <laughs> and so, so uh, but we can use that to our advantage because the uniqueness of those names, the language of those names that we don't normally use can help to kind of jog our memory for what things are. We start to associate them with the title. OK. So uh, <clears throat> excuse me. What we're going to do now is we're going to make a low hoop. And we're going to pick this hoop up above the head, turn the palms out, drop the elbows to vertical cross in the middle, doesn't matter which hand's in front, and come back down to low hoop. Very good. So we lift, palms out, drop the elbows cross, low hoop, lift, palms out, drop the elbows cross, low hoop, lift, palms out, drop the elbows cross, low hoop, lift, palms out, drop the elbows cross, and low hoop. Awesome. We're going to bring that hoop shoulder height. We're going to turn the palms out. So we still want that round shape. One of the ways to make sure that shape is round is if I point my fingertips towards each other. Right? You see how it kind of kicks the shoulders and the elbows up? From here, we're going to kind of trace a figure eight pattern. The way we're going to do that is if we drop our elbows, you notice your hands move to the outside. We bring our elbows in, the hands come in. So there's our figure eight on its side. We go out, in. Very good. Out, in, out. In, out, in, out, in, out, and in. Very good. Palms waist high. We're going to bring the elbows out, make a circle, gather two fists, bring them in, and extend out. Very good. Palms up, elbows out, we form a circle, gather, and extend. Palms up, form a circle. We gather, extend, palms up, form a circle, gather, extend, palms up, form a circle, 
gather, extend, and palms up, form a circle, gather, and extend. Beautiful. The next position we're going to do is a triangle. Right? We're just going to bring both hands together, elbows are down. Uh, I'll turn to the side so you can see that I want my fingertips to be in line with my nose, both this way and height wide, and I want my elbows to be bent at like a 45 degree. So from here, keeping this center line position, we're going to draw down with our right hand until the wrist is about the height of the navel. And then we come back around. Good. Draw down with your left, and then around. Draw down with the right, and then around. Draw down with the left, and around. Draw down with your right, and around. Draw down with your left, and around. Right, and around. And one more time, draw down with the left, and around. Excellent. Now we're going to go a horizontal elbow, palm facing us with the right arm. So we want the elbow up and the thumb straight up and down. We're going to take the palm of our left hand and put it against the right hand. Good. So we now have one elbow down and one elbow up. We want to relax the shoulder and switch. Very good. Excellent. Awesome. Let's round out with the left palm facing us, thumb up, right palm against the left palm, and again we alternate. Very good. Let's go back to that triangle position. Now I'm going to do this facing you to start, but I'll also go conventional view just because it can be a little confusing sometimes. So what we want to do is called draw the bow. And it mimics drawing a bow and an arrow to the side. The way that we do that is we're going to turn to the right and then turn back to the middle. So we want the, le the left hand to be the one that draws the bow back. Good. We turn to the left and then back to the middle. Very good. Turn to the right and then back to the middle. Nice. Turn to the left and back to the middle. Turn to the right and back to the middle. Turn to the left and back to the middle. That's pretty good. So we're going to open our feet a little wider, point the toes out. <clears throat> we're going to start with uh, something that would be familiar to anybody who has ever seen Jane Fonda. So we're going to bend the knees, cross at the wrist, make a big circle. Good. Cross, lift, big circle. Cross, lift, big circle. Cross, lift big circle, cross, lift, big circle. Awesome. <clears throat> so what we're trying to do is automate a lot of these processes, right? We want to make a big circle with the arms. Uh, when we start to turn the waist, we want to continue to make that big circle, which is what we're going to do next. So if we turn to the right, cross, lift, make that big circle as you turn back to the middle. Good. Turn to the left, cross, lift, Big circle as we turn back to the middle. Excellent. Turn to the right, cross lift, big circle, turn to the middle. Turn to your left, cross lift, big circle, turn to the middle. Turn to your right, cross lift, big circle, turn to the middle. And turn to your left, cross lift, big circle, turn to the middle. Awesome. Feet shoulder width. We're going to cross our arms with the right hand on the outside. And on this one, we're going to lift the right and press with the left. We're going for kind of stretch of the spine. We switch, 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 and switch. Very good. Deep breathing, palms up, elbows down. We inhale and exhale. Inhale. And exhale, inhale, and exhale. Well, first of all, really well done. It's so great to see everybody. You can't see it, but I got a giant smile under this mask. Uh, and, and, uh, and so are there any questions before we jump into the next portion of things, which we're going to actually go through some of the movements from the form? No? No worries. OK, I'm just going to do a quick time check, see where we're at.
oh good, we've got good time. So <clears throat> just like we take complex things in the exercises and reassemble them, we're going to do the same thing with the movements from the form, right? So actually what I like to do is, just before we begin, I'll do the first section of the form as a refresher for those of you that have done it and just to introduce it to you for those that haven't. And then we're going to take that, um, we'll take one or two movements out of the form and we're going to break them down and then put them back together. Right? So typically we start the form, we call it preparation. We go beginning style, flying diagonally. Is it coming back for anybody? <laughs> Grass the sparrow's tail. Single whip. Hold the ball. Flying diagonally. Beginning style. Step up to raise the hands. And stork flaps wings. So that's section one of the form. The, the form that we do is called the Tai Chi Paradigm. It's a form that my teacher, Calvin Chin, uh, created after over 50 years of experience of teaching people Tai Chi. Um, it has 37 postures and seven sections. Um, but don't let that scare you because some sections are longer than other sections and you just keep plugging away at it and pretty soon you find that you're making pretty good progress. So what I'd like to do is let's start with the uh, Grass the Sparrow's Tail. We're going to do, this is like a cooking show, we're going to do Grass the Sparrow's Tail three ways. Okay? <laughs> the first way is no legs, just the upper half of the body and everything we do is going to be symmetrical. So both arms are going to do the same thing. We have our triangle. We're going to fill out to make a hoop. Good. Extend straight out. We call this square because of the angle of the shoulder at the chest. We're going to relax everything and draw diagonally down to the hip. Lift the hands to the chest and push out square. Again, draw down diagonally to the hip. Palms up. And the fingertips meet in the middle, kind of like you were reading a book, and back to triangle. Very good. So we've got our triangle. Hoop, square, diagonal, good, lift up, push out, square, diagonal, palms up, fingertips towards each other, they meet in the middle, and back to triangle, very good, again, triangle, hoop, square, diagonal, pushing out, square, again, diagonal, Palms up, fingertips towards each other, they meet in the middle, and back to triangle. That's really well done. So we're using a kind of frame of reference that you can verify for yourself. For example, if I said triangle, hoop, square, you would know there was something wrong, and you should probably call for medical attention, right? <laughs> so, so you can see for yourself, do I have what's roughly a triangle shape? Is this round? Is this square at this position? Is this a diagonal? So these are things that as we go through, you can kind of verify for yourself. <clears throat> the next step of progression in this is that we're going to do the asymmetrical version. Both arms are going to do the same thing, but different timing. And so we start here with a triangle. Good. We're going to draw down with the left hand. We call this a neutral position. We're going to go to that hoop position with the right. Left palm against the right palm. Here's your square. We're going to do square again by extending the right arm out, connect the right wrist to the fingertips of the left hand, and we draw both hands diagonally down to the left hip. Very good. Turn your left hand palm face up, and with it connected to the wrist, we want to push the right hand to the right hip, lift the hand to the shoulder, and push out square. Excellent. Let's try that again. We go triangle position, draw down with the left, horizontal elbow or hoop, Square, palm to palm, extend out to square, connect at the wrist, draw both hands down diagonally to the left hip, flip the left hand over, use it to push the right hand to the right hip, lift the hand to the shoulder, and we push out square. Beautifully done. That's really nice. Let's try that again. Draw down with the left, horizontal elbow, palm against palm, extend out square, connect at the wrist, draw down diagonally, Flip the left hand up, bring the right hand to the right, bring the hand to the shoulder, 
and we're out square. Awesome, everybody. All right, so now we're going to do that with the legs. I'm going to show you the legs separately, just so that you don't panic, because this is the extent of what we're going to do with our legs. We're going to go forward, sit back, go forward, sit back. That's it. OK, so we're going to point our left toe 45 degrees and step straight out with the right foot into that empty stance. So we want the predominance of our weight on the left leg. We make that triangle position. We draw down with the left hand. Good. Horizontal elbow or hoop, palm against palm. Now we're going to gently shift our weight forward, keeping both feet flat. Nice. Extend the right arm out square. Connect at the wrist. Sit back and draw both hands down to the left hip. Left palm up, push the right hand to the right hip. Lift the hand to the shoulder, and we shift our weight forward. Beautifully done. That looks suspiciously like Tai Chi to me. OK. <laughs> All right, so let's try that again. Repetition is our friend, as we say in Tai Chi. So the more we do it, the more benefit, and also the more we remember. So we're going to draw down with the left. Horizontal elbow with the right, palm facing us. So we want the thumb straight up and down. Left palm against the right palm. We shift gently forward. Extend the right arm out. Connect at the wrist. Sit back. Draw both hands down to the left hip. Left palm up. Push the right hand to the right hip. We go to the shoulder. And we shift forward. Beautifully done. Let's try that again. Draw down with the left hand. Horizontal elbow with the right, palm against palm. We shift gently forward. Extend out with the right arm, connect at the wrist. Sit back, we draw down. Flip the left hand over, push the right hand to the right hip. Lift the hand, and we shift forward. Really good. Why don't we give the legs a quick break? So one of the things about Tai Chi is that there's often a misconception that uh, because Tai Chi is known to be done by seniors, and also because it doesn't get our heart rate jumping, and our, you know it's not CrossFit. Um, thank God it's not CrossFit, uh, <laughs> right? But there is a misconception by people who haven't done Tai Chi that maybe Tai Chi is something. Well, it's you know it's easy. This is old people do this slow moving thing in the park. But what you'll find is that this prolonged bearing of weight and shifting your weight back and forth does actually tax the legs. So it's good to kind of shake them out sometimes, give it a little bit of a rest. Um, you know, Tai Chi has been shown in studies to improve bone density for people with osteoporosis. And the reason for that is they say the best thing you can do for osteoporosis is weight-bearing exercise. So whether that's pumping iron or your own body's weight, you're helping, helping to strengthen the bone matrix by bearing that weight, right? Um, and so there's a ton of benefits to doing this. Um, let's try uh, the next thing, just the arms, OK? So what we're going to do is triangle position. We draw down. Horizontal elbow with the left. Right palm against the left. Alternate the elbow and draw down diagonally with your right. Good. So let's try that again. Neutral position. We're going to draw down with the right. Horizontal elbow with the left. Right palm against the left palm. Alternate the elbow position. Draw diagonally down. Good. And again, triangle position. Draw down with your right. Horizontal elbow with the left. Palm facing us so the thumb is up. Right palm against the left palm. Alternate the elbow. And draw diagonally down with the right. So actually, we want the right hand to be the one that comes down. Yeah. So. We're going to go to this vertical elbow position with the left. So the left elbow is down, the right elbow is up. And we're going to leave the left hand where it is, and we're going to draw diagonally down with the right. There we go. So let's try that one more time. Triangle position. Draw straight down with the right. Horizontal elbow with the left. Palm against palm. We alternate the elbow and draw diagonally down with the right. Awesome. OK, so let me just check time. If we have time, I'd love to run through. It looks like we do have time, so that's good news. Let's run through the form sequence up to that point. OK? So what we're going to do is feet shoulder width. We're going to gently raise the arms. We call this preparation. Elbows down. We draw down, press, and settle. Good. 
we're going to shift. So I'm going to do this conventional view. I think it may be a little more confusing to people if they're trying to do the mirror image here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is shift to my left, pivot on my right, shift to my right, touch my left toe and step out empty stance with the left foot, triangle position, horizontal elbow with the right, sorry, horizontal elbow with the left, right palm against the left palm, we're going to shift forward. We're going to sit back, kick our left heel out, shift to the left leg, and now we're going to alternate the elbow. So left elbow comes down, right elbow comes up, and we're going to draw diagonally down with the right hand. Very good. We step up, bring the right foot in, and step out with the right foot, empty stance. Excellent. Now we're going to go neutral position with the right hand on top. We're going to go horizontal elbow with the right, palm facing us, left palm against the right palm. Here's our grass the sparrow's tail. We shift forward, extend out square, connect at the wrist, sit back, draw both hands down to the left hip, left palm up, push your right hand to the right hip, lift the right hand to the shoulder, and shift forward. Beautifully done. Yeah, that's great. So let's try that again. Okay, so we'll do that, uh, we'll do that one or two times conventional view, and then I'll do mirror image so that you can also be sure that you've got the hands right. All right, so we're here, preparation. We draw down, shift to the left, pivot on your right toe, shift to your right, touch your toe for balance and step out, empty stance, triangle, and then neutral position. So left hands on top, right hands by our navel, horizontal elbow with the left, palm against palm, and we gently shift forward. Good, we sit back, kick our left heel out, shift to the left leg, Alternate the elbow, so the right elbow comes up, right left hand come, left elbow comes down, draw down diagonally with your right hand. Good. We step up, bring the right foot in, and the right foot out, empty stance. Bring the right hand on top, neutral position. So we have both hands lined up in the middle. Now we're going to raise the right elbow. We're going to bring the left hand against the right palm, shift forward. Extend out with the right arm, connect at the wrist, sit back, we draw down, both hands to the left hip, left palm up, push your right hand to the right hip, lift the hand to the shoulder, and we go forward. Beautifully done. All right. Any questions so far, concerns, inner Tai Chi, turmoil, and angst? I mean, those are all reasonable responses, right? <laughs> no? Okay. So uh, let's do that one more time. Uh, in that direction. And then we'll still be doing the same direction, but we'll do it one time where I'm doing the mirror image to what you're doing. So I'll face you. We can be sure you can see the hands. So we're here. Raise up, preparation. Draw down. Shift to your left, pivot on your right. Shift to your right, touch your left toe and step out, empty stance. Triangle, draw down with your right hand to neutral position. Horizontal elbow, palm against palm, we shift forward. Sit back, kick your left heel out, shift to the left leg, alternate. So you raise your right elbow, bring your left elbow down. Draw diagonally down with your right hand. Very good, we're gonna step up. Bring the right foot in and step out, empty stance. So from here, right hand comes on top. All our weight's on the left leg, and the right hand's on top, left hand's the height of our navel. We horizontal elbow with the right, palm against palm, shift forward, extend out with the right arm, connect at the wrist, sit back, draw both hands down to the left hip, left palm up, push your right hand to the right hip, lift the hand to the shoulder, and shift forward. Really nicely done. Okay, so now let's do that. I'm going to face you just so that you don't miss what happens with the hands. So preparation. We draw down. We're going to shift to our right, to our left. Pivot on the right. Touch the left toe and step straight out with your left foot. Triangle position. Draw down with your right hand. Horizontal elbow with your left. Palm against palm. We shift forward. Good. We sit back. Kick our left heel out. Shift to the left. So towards me. Yep. Good. Alternate. We raise the right elbow. Draw diagonally down with the right hand. 
step up. We're going to bring the right foot in and step out. Right hand on top, neutral position. Yep. Horizontal elbow with the right, palm against palm. We gently shift forward. Extend out with the right arm, connect at the wrist. Sit back, draw both hands down to the left hip, very good. Left palm up, push your right hand to the right hip. Lift the hand to the shoulder, and we go forward. That's excellent. So for those that have done this before, how does it feel to be doing it again? Is it good? It, yeah, well, that's OK. It, it, does, it does come back, right? <laughs> And for those that are new, how does it feel? I mean, I know it's a, it's a, yes, it's a cacophony of instruction, especially in the beginning. Um, the idea behind all of this, my teacher's kind of vision and methodology for the program that we create, that he created, is that Tai Chi is inherently complex and difficult. There's a lot of nuance to it, and the old model of teaching Tai Chi was just follow along and eventually you'll feel something, which is awesome if I want to get off the hook as a teacher because you come to me in six months, you say, I still don't feel anything. You're not doing it right. Keep trying, right? But our goal is actually to make sure that people leave a class with some understanding of a better strategy for movement, right? Everything we're doing in Tai Chi has an aesthetic appeal, uh, depending on opinion, right? But uh, so you could say it's, it's flowing and continual and it has a nice look to it. But that's actually secondary. The primary thing is to move the body the way the body is designed to move. So you notice we have a lot of weight shifting. And we do a lot of pivoting of the feet, right? And we have all of this articulation of the shoulder, right? We're going from this position to this position. Um, and this is because our hips and our shoulders are a ball in a socket. Most people use them like it's a hinge, right? So typically, if I want to walk up the hallway, I'm going to take a, take a right. I don't do this, right, unless I'm in the cartoons. So the thing is that typically people make small corrective steps, right? And this is one of the reasons why hips are one of the most replaced joints in America, because we don't use it for its potential. If you actually use the ball in the socket the way it was designed, you, inf you infuse the joint with blood, you make things more elastic and more mobile. Right? The same with shoulders. Rotator cuff is super, super common. Right? Um, so if I never use this like it's a ball in a socket, right? when was the last time you had your hand up like, oh, I know the answer? It's probably been just a little while, I would guess. Right? So most people don't lift their arm above their head. Right? And so as we stop doing those things, we lose the ability, the elasticity, the mobility to do that. And so in Tai Chi, we're doing these things where we're bringing that motion back in. If I try to just force it, you know, I could injure myself. But if we do things slowly and gently, we can improve that. And that's kind of the whole philosophy behind all of this. So just as a quick reminder, um, you know, we have this class here. I have a class on Wednesdays uh, that I teach by Zoom uh, for free for people of the, of the COAs that I teach at. Um, and if you, if you don't have it, I'm happy to share the Zoom link with you uh, through email. Um, that class, again, is 100% free. I also have a class on Mondays and on Fridays as well. Uh, so you can get the full schedule of classes at martialartsforlife.net. That's my website. Uh, in addition, we also have a school in Newton, Calvin Chin's Martial Arts Academy. And we have a YouTube website, uh, a YouTube channel where we stream classes live four days a week for free. So we have a lot of um, we have a lot of resources that we'd like you to take advantage of uh, because we know that the more we do this, the better it is, right? The more we move the joints, the more that we're improving our balance through things that challenge our balance, the more we're improving our circulation, all of that stuff, um, the better the net benefit to our health, our balance, our kind of mental well-being is. Um, I know sometimes it can be a little bit of a daunting task. We take on all of this information. We're trying to, OK, is my left earlobe doing the right thing right now, right? You do not want to stress out doing Tai Chi, <laughs> right? So, so be kind to yourself in your outlook. But I also would say that uh, you, know, you come into class today, to be able to get through that series all the way through to Grass the Sparrow's Tail is a pretty, pretty well done. So. I want to check. I think we might be coming towards the end here. Yep, we're one minute past the end. So that's our class.
Uh, it's so great to see all of you, old friends and new, <laughs> and, uh, and I hope that we'll see you at the next one. All right. Take care, everybody. Thank you.